Okay, that brings us to AS. This is a joint resolution with the Economic Development Trust. Uh, there'd be a final meeting on this December 20th, and it's in regards to a potential allocation of $1 million from our economic development incentives to canoe manufacturing. And I might, I might just throw in, because I've kind of been involved in these conversations for, for several years now. We've been in an ongoing conversation with our, with our potential partners from Canoe, as well as the state of Oklahoma. And um, it recently evolved in a way that you'll hear about today, but it's, a, it's an exciting uh, potential opportunity for the city. But we've been talking through this stuff uh, now, really, for at least two or three years, I think, um, about the potential for Canoe's presence in this region. And in early goings, it appeared Oklahoma City would not have as big of a role as we might have hoped, but that has recently changed, and that's why we're here today. So, Mr. City Manager. Yeah, so Jeff Seymour with the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce is here, and he's going to give us an introduction here. Chris Moore with Canoe is here to talk about the project and uh, the vision that they have for the projects out to the west part of the city. Well, good morning. Uh, Council, I really couldn't give a better introduction than the one that the mayor just gave, which is that we've been in conversations with this company for multiple years, thinking about different iterations and ways that uh, the company could have a physical presence um, in uh, the Oklahoma City metro area. Um, as the company iterated on different ideas, um, we were pleased that we stayed in constant conversation with him and were able to think about the opportunity to take an existing facility, which had lost in large part its manufacturing tenant and reuse it. Uh, for a next generation manufacturing facility. And so I'm pleased that Chris Moore, Vice President of Canoe, is here to talk about that um, proposal with you. Um, I would say out loud that um, when we think about incentives for companies like this and the way your uh, strategic incentive program is structured, it is performance based. So it does require that the company meet performance metrics, including jobs, employment, hiring, and capital investment. And then we pay out. Um, on a structured basis, uh, performance-based incentives back to them as a rebate. So uh, we're pleased that Chris is here. We're excited about this project and excited about the potential to add manufacturing investment um, in a portion of, of Oklahoma City that has long been a manufacturing hub. So with that, I'll introduce Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, on behalf of Canoe, um, we're very pleased to have this opportunity to address you this morning. I'm Chris Moore, a Vice President of Canoe, and I'm here with uh, Trey Hill from the Bradley Legal Firm, which has served as our Economic Development uh, and Site Selection Advisor. And would love to uh, just spend a few minutes uh, walking you through some information about our company, uh, where we are in our manufacturing journey, uh, why we have uh, are looking so closely at an opportunity here in Oklahoma City uh, and some of the benefits uh, that we think um, could be there for both of us. Um, just moving to the next slide, um, Canoe is a manufacturer of award-winning electric vehicles. Uh, we pride ourselves on um, designing, engineering, uh, and building from the ground up uh, working vehicles for working people. Uh, you'll see the first two models uh, in, on this slide that we'll be bringing to market in the new year. Uh, we started our production, uh, commercial production, two weeks ago, uh, and we'll be bringing these first models uh, to market. Uh, one is a delivery van. Uh, the other is a passenger uh, version of that same vehicle. Uh, we're very pleased that we've received a strong positive reaction in the marketplace. Uh, over the last few months, we've allowed, announced major orders uh, with Walmart, uh, with major vehicle leasing companies. Uh, we have also begun our journey uh, to supply vehicles to the federal government. Canoe was selected by NASA to provide the vehicles that will transport uh, U.S. astronauts to the launch pad for future Artemis moon missions. And uh, we delivered our first vehicle to the U.S. Army um, uh, just uh, last week in Michigan. Moving to the next slide, um, just a little bit about our manufacturing journey. Canoe is currently in uh, phase one of that journey, which you'll see on the far left slide of this slide. Uh, we're uh, working with a contract manufacturer uh, to build our initial uh, run of vehicles. We've previously announced uh, our phase three manufacturing plans which you see on the far right of the slide. Uh, we will build our main factory 
uh, here in Oklahoma, out in uh, Mays County in northeast uh, part of the state. What was missing for us uh, was the middle of this, uh, which is how we bring our uh, manufacturing in-house and begin to scale that manufacturing. And we have been looking for uh, a site uh, to do that. We've recently announced that we will um, uh, build our battery modules um, at an existing um, site in northeast Oklahoma. And we have identified an existing uh, factory that we would like to acquire here in the Oklahoma City area um, and uh, for our main vehicle manufacturing uh, facility that would give us um, an ability to produce as many as 40,000 vehicles a year um, at that facility and meet some of the strong demand that we're seeing in the marketplace. We considered uh, a number of different options um, before uh, deciding that Oklahoma City was the right place for us, including um, options in Arkansas, Indiana, Michigan, uh, other sites in Oklahoma, um, as well as in Texas. Um, and in the end, um, Oklahoma City really won us over. Um, moving to the next slide, um, just a few of the things that made this the right uh, choice, we think, for us. Um, we were able to find an existing site uh, that has been used for manufacturing, um, and it uh, is of sufficient size for us to really scale our production. It's very well located uh, near major rail and interstate and uh, airport. Um, and uh, it also happens to have uh, an existing uh, dedicated training center that we can use uh, to, um, to do our uh, onboarding for our initial employees. Uh, so we think uh, this is an ideal site for us to, uh, to move forward. Moving to the next slide, um, uh, just some of our plans. We would be, plan to begin hiring for this um, in the first half of 2023. Uh, would be looking to uh, employ initially about 550 people. Um, and we will need to do some renovations of the existing facility to accommodate uh, our production lines, um, our paint shop, and upfitting of our vehicles. And just moving to the last slide, um, we see a significant opportunity not only for uh, Canoe to be um, uh, further expanding uh, our footprint and accelerating our production in the state of Oklahoma, but also some real opportunities for Oklahoma City. The electric vehicle sector is uh, quite dynamic and growing very quickly. Uh, and this, uh, we think, is an excellent opportunity for Oklahoma City to, uh, to get involved in uh, this sector and at an early stage uh, when the city can realize um, uh, much of the growth that will occur here, uh, bringing in an uh, equipment manufacturer, a final assembler of vehicles, also gives the opportunity to attract some of our suppliers uh, to the city as well uh, and further contribute to um, the increasing diversity of the, uh, the region's economy. We're very um, focused on uh, some of the um, workforce development opportunities that we see here. A lot of great partners uh, in Oklahoma City that we can work with already, um, but really looking forward to, uh, to rolling up our sleeves uh, and being a part of uh, how we can help to train the workforce here uh, that we will need uh, and that other industries will need uh, here as well. So, um, Mr. Mayor, I'll conclude there, but very happy to answer any questions from the council. Okay, any questions for Chris? I have a couple questions. First, thank you for the presentation. Uh, one question, do we know exactly in the area where this uh, facility will be located? The, uh, the location of the facility, um, yes, we do. Um, it's an existing factory off of Interstate 40. Um, we can provide the, the exact address to you. Um, you can't do that now? Um, I don't it, have it in front of it's me, a, but it's... It's a, basically at I-40 and Morgan Road. 
It's okay. a former Terex that they're vacating that property. It's so an existing facility out there at I-40 and Morgan Road. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, my second question, I saw we're trying to bring and working to bring about 550 jobs uh, to Oklahoma City. Uh, this is not a new ask. I ask this every time we have different companies and manufacturers come. Are you going to be a company that bans the box? And when I say ban the box, which that means are you going to uh, be a felon friendly company where we are able to employ our folks who have had felonies? Yeah, it's a really great question. Um, first of all, we're, um, we're planning to hire quite a number of people over the next uh, 18 months to two years. So we're really looking for all qualified applicants um, for those positions. And um, for us, um, uh, second chances um, are very important. Um, and we would love to, uh, to work with you, with others, um, to see how there might be opportunities to, um, uh, to, um, to look at uh, some of the ways that we can um, help in that um, regard as well. So absolutely um, open to, um, uh, to, to looking at that and to, um, uh, to opportunities to bring um, those uh, workers into our workforce as well. Uh, and then my last question uh, about as far as the age, uh, what are there going to be the requirements as far as age to be employed by this company? Um, we would um, certainly comply with, uh, with all of the uh, age and hour uh, requirements that we have in the state. Um, we're looking for, uh, for a mix of employees. So we will have some engineering, some managerial employees that will require um, college degrees and, and years of experience. We also will be um, working um, to, um, the bulk of our employees will be uh, factory floor workers. Um, we will be seeking to uh, employ uh, skilled workers, but also we'd like to be involved in uh, how we begin to train the workforce that we need. Um, and so um, we'll be looking at um, opportunities to engage with STEM programs at the high school level, but also at the community college level. Okay, and I apologize, this is my last question. Um, what will be the starting salary and or hourly wage? So we've, um, we've um, computed an average hourly wage um, or, or average annual wage of around 71,000 um, for our employees at the site. Um, we have um, made commitments um, previously publicly that we would um, offer our factory employees at least $25 an hour. Um, and so looking to, uh, these will be good jobs for, um, for the community. We are really excited about you coming to Oklahoma City and I just personally want to thank you, but um, could you tell some of the listeners some of the fun facts about the vehicles, uh, range, capacity, size, um, number of riders, just tell us a little bit about the vehicles itself. Yeah, so um, we're very excited about what we've been able to do with, uh, with our vehicles. So often as, as we move to electric vehicles, you'll see uh, an internal combustion engine vehicle that's basically that old engine is taken out and you're placing in a new um, electric motor. It all looks the same. Um, no opportunity was taken to, uh, to really reimagine uh, how that vehicle can work. Um, we have taken that opportunity. And so our engineers have kind of thought if we were Henry Ford coming back uh, into the place where we are now, knowing what we know now, um, how would he approach um, automaking today? And so our engineers have really re-engineered uh, these vehicles from the ground up. Uh, we have developed um, a proprietary um, chassis for our vehicles that includes all of the key component parts, the batteries, the motors, um, of course, the drivetrain, and that is separate from what goes on top of that vehicle. And we're employing uh, 
steer-by-wire technology that we've uh, adapted from aviation, and that means there's no steering column that's connected from the top of the vehicle to the chassis. And what that allows us to do and what that allows our customers to do is really um, have multiple options for what goes on top of that chassis. So if the chassis is um, engineered to go for hundreds of thousands of miles, um, but maybe you've bought a, um, a cool pickup truck on our chassis and you uh, decide later on you need a minivan. You can come back to us, um, we can take off that minivan or take off that pickup truck and put the minivan on top of it um, in a, about six hours, that change can be made. And so it offers a lot of opportunities for consumers um, and for our, our fleet customers. Uh, thank you and welcome to Oklahoma City. I think this is exciting. It's a, uh, a, uh, a very interesting uh, marketing concept and it, it creates its own market with the way you've uh, designed the vehicle. Uh, unlike, say, Tesla, I hate to bring up other companies, but uh, you provide so much more options in terms of, of your market. So uh, welcome and, and we wish you good luck. I would like to point this out. We're expecting uh, more than a five per, I mean a five to one return from our investment from local uh, sales and property taxes. Unfortunately, not all of the investments made by this development trust of ours uh, is successful in that regard. So I'd like if we could get a report. Uh, of investments made by the Economic Development Trust, say over the past two to three years, comparing the expected return to the local economy for those investments that we're making. But this is a great example where manufacturing does provide, on average, nationally five to seven uh, times the amount of investment from uh, local government. So great story, helps us out helps us to help the citizens of Oklahoma City to find a uh, more productive uh, type of employment that uh, I think is going to be here for a very long time. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd just like to say welcome to Oklahoma City. Welcome to Ward 3. Super Thank excited you. about you coming. Um, you, you spoke a little bit about your partnerships with um, Votex, and I think I read it in here, but Canadian Valley and, and Francis Tuttle, you're pretty well going to be situated um, dead center between the two. So I look forward to anything I can do to help you guys um, progress with that. The kids are really important to me and having um, opportunities for them to stay in Oklahoma City um, and work at a good wage is, is very promising. So we look forward to having you. Thank you so much. We'll look forward to working with you on that. Any other comments or questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chris.